So Susan Loudermilk has been generous enough to share with us uh, three print portfolios that she participated in and has in her collection. Susan, can you tell us a little bit about what a print portfolio is and how you came to be a part of these? Okay, good. Um, I should probably introduce myself first. Oh yes, that's good. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, I'm Susan Loudermilk and I've been teaching here at Lane for a long time. As an artist, uh, I am a book artist and a printmaker. So I work on paper, presses, ink, and I put it together uh, to show my work in galleries and other venues. So these are three different print portfolios that are exchanges. A print portfolio exchange is where a group of artists get together and each person does a print, usually based on a theme and a size. Um, one person organizes a portfolio and then the whole group at the end gets sent um, uh, one from everybody else. Um, there also might be a museum collection that uh, gets a portfolio or a school collection. Um, they're not meant for sale, but sometimes they're sold for scholarships or for donations to an organization, things like that. Um, they're super common in the world. I've been involved in uh, portfolio exchanges starting from when I was in graduate school in my middle twenties and up till now, um, maybe one a year, one every other year, something like that. And um, print portfolios are like... For an artist, when you get a group of work that's the real stuff, that's not like you're looking on Pinterest or some other media where you see the real thing, then you, you get to feel it and touch it and there's the ink on the paper and you see what kind of paper they have and you get to roll it around your hands and smell it and, and investigate the layers of ink and you see what their media is and how they put down. So you get so much more educational information as an artist when you are able to see the real thing. And you can touch them because you own them. And so, you know, these, it's really wonderful to see these all um, exhibited, but obviously you can't like roll them over your hands and feel the difference between a lovely handmade Asian paper and a gorgeous, you know, cotton European paper, blah, blah, blah. You go down that rabbit hole. So this portfolio behind you is, um, curated by three artists through the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art. And yes. all of the folks in this print portfolio um, are book artists as well as printmakers, right? Yeah, and so this portfolio, which was organized by the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art, and the, that collects both prints as well as artist books. Um, and a book, an artist book is an intentional work of art done as a book, not like an illustrated book that just looks like any other book on the shelf, but they are designed for when you pick them up and you open them up, suddenly you're in the realm of, of the experience of an art piece. Um, and so the artists that they've collected at the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art, including me in this, especially they had a large show, they invited to do uh, one print in the portfolio. And um, a lot of artists said, yeah, I wanna do that. And so this was actually the largest portfolio I think I've ever been a part of. And 34 or something like that, which is a tall order for making an original art piece. Um, 34 is a lot. And so uh, my piece is this one and um, it's a uh, woodcut on gray paper and yellow paper in two colors and then the black um, and laminated together. 
So this print was originally as part of my artist book, um, which is an Emily Dickinson poem that I've attributed, or I've kind of uh, used it to be a message about climate change. Um, that one originally appeared as a pop-up. And so the pieces I laminated together and used it as a print. Uh, other artists might probably made original works for this portfolio. And the theme is nature. And so we were told also to think of not only our natural environment outside, but maybe our, not, our environment, or it's about environment, it was called environment, inside or the environment of being a creator. So they leave the themes pretty open so that you can grab onto something interesting. And then that makes it more interesting for the people that are sharing, you know, the, seeing the portfolio. Um, it's like a little assignment. It's an assignment. I know. It's like when artists get out of school, there's no more assignment. And so you have to make up your own assignments. And what do you do? You know, I mean, like sometimes it's super easy because you have this thread you're following uh, as an artist and it's great. And other times you're like, oh my God, I just wish I was given an assignment. So printmakers will like tap into a portfolio. This one was an invitational. These other two are not invitational. They were... Um, College Book Arts Association. Yeah, this is College Book Art Association, which is a group of, of, art, or of, of book arts professors that I belong to. And so when we get together in our conferences, we talk about how to teach book arts, what's on the horizon. Um, there's paper makers, print makers, uh, letterpress printers, graphic designers, all sorts of different people. It's a really fun group. Um, and so they're really active in uh, sharing art with each other and ideas. And they had uh, several print portfolios. And this one was just the Northwest. So they had Northwest, Southwest, and probably Midwest, uh, Northeast, Southeast, South. You know, there's, I don't know, there's five or so. So I was in part of that Northwest group. And um, the theme of this one is also about environment, but they also have um, talked about that in, uh, in this portfolio, the idea of being on indigenous lands. Um, so everybody takes that to, you know, to, you know, riff off of however they want to. Um, and there's some really interesting. Uh, yeah, I think one of my favorite in this, Susan, is the uh, Diane Jacobs, uh, the bot botanical print with the lists of all of the peoples. Yeah, one of my students from basic design, who's actually um, a, a Navajo, she really thought this was also fascinating because a lot of the artists in these portfolios um, are also letterpress printers, so they use text. And that's another clue as to what is this piece about. And so this one, she, um, this, Diane Jacobs is an artist from Portland, and she printed flowers and leaves. And um, I've, I've never done botanical printing, but she took the real thing and smashed them down and waited long enough so that the juice got into the paper. And I'm not sure if that's you a good description. <laughs> yeah, and then you end up with this beautiful thing. So each each bit is a little different. And then she listed all of the um, tribal names from the Northwest, which is just really great. Yeah. Would that be a monoprint then instead of a addition because she was doing it with a plant? Yeah, it would be a variable addition. So the, the text is the same on everything, and then there's a certain amount of variance to each one. Yeah. Yep. 
Um, let's see. What so, else do you want to talk about? And then there's okay. the third portfolio here. Right. The, the third one is a kind of an ongoing portfolio, and it's called um, Communities West. And this is one that anybody can sign up for. And I signed up for it. Um, uh, it's the moderator is out of Bozeman, Montana, uh, uh, Suka Warab. And you have to, there's, there's, it's the, there's more of an open theme, but it's really about the Western United States. And, um, and if you have an affin, you know, so if you, you fit in, and it's, it's a pretty broad uh, um, theme that if you have an affinity with the West, you were born in the West, you live in the West, you love things Western, <laughs> then you can be part of it. So there's got to be a little bit of a connection. Yeah. Um, how do you find your print exchanges? Is it through word of mouth networking? Is there a specific place you go to find where you want to sign up? Oh, that is really good. Yes, they're all over the place. Um, sometimes they pop up in you know, my email or on a listserv. Um, this one I saw was advertised at a printmaking conference I went to. Um, uh, so yeah, I could help you kind of tap into some, because they're all over the world, really. And they're not meant for when you get your portfolio of work to be like for sale or you put them up there to sell to your friends or something. They're really meant for an artist to artist um, communication that you could really see what artists are about. Because prints are easily mailed. Uh, they're, they're, they're nice and class, and uniform. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes it really intimate because you're one of only 34 people that has a copy of it then. Yep. So only people who are seeing your exhibit are getting to experience that, right? Yeah, it's a different sort of art experience. That's a really good uh, point. Um, and it is intimate, like an artist book, where pretty much I've, I've never seen these on the walls before. I've seen them as I've like gone through them page by page and just kind of grooved on them. and look at the you know, technique and the paper, and you get to see each, the, the vision of each artist. And as an artist, it's really important to be able to, you know, get to see what other artists are doing and like wonder about how they got there in that, uh, through that theme. And because you, you, these people from all over the country, so one of the things that was so fun about putting together this exhibit was sitting with you one evening as you went through and deconstructed, visually deconstructed print techniques, layers mm -hmm. of those print techniques. So as you're wandering around looking at the pieces later, you'll see that on the label with the artist's name and the title, there are also the techniques, printmaking techniques used in each of these prints. And so that was really fun to listen to your excitement, your joy and enthusiasm. <laughs> oh, check this out. Oh, they did this and then. Yeah, because like, for, you know, it's all in layers, right? Uh, and some are not layered at all. So for example, let's take this one. This okay. Catherine Alice Michaelis. Uh, she's somebody I've always wanted to meet. I've not met her yet. Um, so yeah, it's got this soft uh, impression in the back, which is called a pressure print. And it's kind of like a rubbing, but you do it on the press with just a wee little bit of, of pressure and ink. And it always gives you this fuzzy look, just like this one too. And then on top, she did a lino cut. And it's just the two different techniques together. You have the hard edge and the soft edge. And you know that's really intentional. So like, do, you, do you think that with the lino cut, so she has that print in the background, mm -hmm. and then 
is it, do you think it was a single block lino cut that she inked with mm. the green, with the blue, with the, this teal, this gray and the brown? Or are those separate? This one had, the green had to be done first, right? Yeah, because the blue's because on Because the blue overlaps. Yeah. So that was the kind of <laughs> conversation. I know, it's, a it's so it was, cool figuring yeah, it was out the really puzzle. Exciting. You know, and then I think these are not lino cuts. I think these are little from, you know, photographic polymer oh. plates. Maybe they're repurposed. Well, what you know, a fantastic printmaking education here. I know, and I just get really nerdy about all that stuff. Um, this, I think this is, fa this is so gorgeous. And it's a digital print. One thing I think is really interesting is printmaking is about technology. And, you know, this technology is, goes back 500 years. Um, they were wood block printing in the 1400s. And people still wood block print, but it's not high technology. Digital printing is our current very ubiquitous technology that like everything's digitally printed, but using it as an artist and a very sublime uh, result. And this is on. It's gorgeous. This is on a like a waxed Japanese paper. Yeah, right. it's not wax, but it's it's that kind of translucent vellum where you don't expect a digital print to be on something so delicate. Well, and, and that the paper, the Diane Jacobs print too, this one, this one. Um, is on this really durable but delicate Japanese paper. Um, and yeah. the, the paper quality really says so much. It, it's a part of the story yeah as well yeah which you wouldn't get if you saw an image of it online right or even if it was framed or even if it was and, framed yeah and hanging on the wall exactly yeah this one incorporates handmade paper um so that I'd, one has a lot of techniques right yeah, handmade paper with colored pulp. She colored the pulp and painted with the pulp and then smashed it down to become paper. It's got woodcut. She's the, she's the first woodcut teacher I ever had in my life. Who is that? Karen Kuhn. Oh, yeah. She's amazing. And then letterpress printed wood type. Um, and then maybe some hand painting. I don't know. And then she's got a chop. It's like all these different things that the longer you look at them, the more you, you realize the artist had to, like, with their own hands, you know, make these layers and colors happen just on paper. You know, and there's, but there's multiples of these. 30 of them, 20 of them over here, something over there. And maybe they made, maybe they made more that they're selling on their own, maybe not, I don't know. Are there a couple of favorites that you have over here? Oh, I think this one is so sad and gorgeous. Um, an interrupted melody, which is these dead birds falling to the ground. Um, this one is, is a cyanotype done on fabric. With a little bit of with a little hand bit stitching of, embroidery. Yeah, with some embroidery, which, you know, not that many people do embroidery anymore. So it's like, that's precious and wonderful. And she had to embroider, you know, 20 times. And, and we see that in Mare Blocker's yeah. piece there, too, the hand stitching. That is hand stitched. Uh, two different types of stitches. Yeah, this is, I think, so pretty. And it's so simple. I could, you don't have to have all these multiple layers and super you know, complicated stuff to have something so gorgeous. So this, the quote is a Greta uh, Thunberg quote, the eyes of all future generations are upon you. And it's just this eye with 
nature around it. So gorgeous. Yeah. I have a two part question for you. Mm -hmm. So when you get your prompt, what do you like to do like off the bat to like brainstorm and get the ball rolling? And then the second part, how long do you normally take creating your prompt? Oh, those are two really good questions. Um, I tend to, when I get the prompt, I'll start with um, just brainstorming words or phrases, like things that just pop up in my head. And, and then that might lead me into like sort of a visual direction. And then I'll thumbnail sketch some. And then from there, I might do a little bit of research on what I want to do. Like, do I want to tap into some bit of current event? Or do I want to find a photo that I remember that maybe I could, you know, use visually? Um, and then at some point, you know, you have to commit yourself <laughs> and, uh, um, and figure it out. So um, how long it takes is a big question. Uh, I think just to do a one, one woodcut with one color and maybe just a little bit of a second color, that might be 20 to 30 hours. And, but that's fine because it's like a journey you go on. It's like, how long does it take you to read a book that you totally love? You know, you keep picking it up, you're in it. You know how like, you're really in? To a, when you're early into a book, it's just always in the back of your head, and then you're doing other things, but you're kind of thinking about it. When, when I'm involved in a project, it's always floating around right there. And, and, I, and you try to get there, because that's the best place to be. Like, do you guys have like, a set date that you want yeah. to like, turn everything in by? Totally, and you can't, it's not like you can have an extra week. Gotcha. Not, not at all. So, um, <sighs> Yeah, but it's a long time, and so it might be a couple months, you know, several months, because, you know, you have to figure out what you want to do, and you, everyone has other things in their lives, you know, you have to get the paper. Um, there's always a paper size and a theme, and the theme could just be open, you know, there's, there's ones that are open. Um, the paper size, this paper size is, pretty common, There's, they don't vary off each other very much because they're around a quarter sheet of a big piece of printmaking paper. Um, some of them are smaller, like I've been involved in print portfolios that are, you know, like six by eight or, or something similar, um, which is nice. And then I've, some of the bigger print portfolios uh, that are maybe international, you, send in so many and there might be 50 artists involved and then everybody sends in a dozen and then they get a dozen back but from all those different 50 artists so everyone kind of has a different um, set you know and your set might be different than your friend's set if you both did the same portfolio um yeah how many of these portfolio exchanges have you participated in and have there been any in particular that you felt really resonated with you? Oh boy, that's a really good question. Uh, I don't know how many. Um, uh, at home I've got a couple drawers. <laughs> it's, I don't know, a dozen, 20, 15, and that's just like uh, artists in the world, like just around the country and stuff. Um, uh, for independent study printmaking, I've done exchanges with the students where I'll usually dive in too. Um, I haven't done that for a while, um, but I must have 10 or 12 of those as well. So I don't know, I've got a lot of portfolios. Um, particularly resonated. Um, let me think. 
There's, a, there's a, a group I belong to called the Wood Engravers Network, and it's people that just do wood engraving. Um, mostly these are people from the US and some from Canada, a few from Europe. And they do portfolio exchanges twice a year. Um, and I've been involved with them for almost 30 years. And so now, like, I, I know them. And the, when they come, when the prints come to my house, and you don't have to go, you don't have to uh, be, a, you don't have to give a print every single time um, in this one because it happens a lot. So twice a year, I might get 20 prints. And these are little wood engravings. And it's really exciting to get ones from people that I've met through the years. And so that's resonating to me. And not very many people do, do wood engraving. It used to be the way that they did illustrations in the 1700s and 1800s. And now the artists, now it's really just the artists who do that. And for those of you that haven't seen yet, there are um, some of the folders or boxes here that the print portfolio exchange is stored in. Um, and then there are other tools here, different printmaking techniques and the stuff for those in the display cases here. I think um, another thing that's so exciting about the portfolios is when you're a printmaker and if you've done, even just had a taste in a media, you can spot it from across the room, right? Because you've, 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 you've done it, you've struggled with it, you've been excited by it. And so, um, so that's why like when we were, when I was uh, figuring out what the media were. So when you, okay, let me back up one thing. When you um, are involved in a print exchange, you just give them your print. You don't have to tell them, oh, I'm doing this uh, silk screen and some letterpress and some chincole and stuff like that. You don't have to do that. You just hand it to them and then you get it back. So the, it's, that's why it's a puzzle to, to do all the, chart all the, um, the tags for this show. Um, so as an, as an artist, it's so exciting to see the possibilities. Other people, printmaking is kind of a mystery. Like how did, how did that even happen? And, um, but you guys know <laughs> that, you know, it's a really, intentional process of getting going through some technology and using those weird tools in the case uh, on metal on wood on a screen print um, mixing it all together and finally putting it on paper and then being able to send it all over the country or get it from other people from all over the country so it makes prints really special but they're really difficult to, um, you know, for I think the, the regular person to understand. Um, and so they're, they're thought of as the democratic medium because you can have multiple originals. And, you know, they could be seen as, yeah, so what? But we know better. <laughs> and the print studios in, in Building 10, um, uh, woodcut, lino cut, um, uh, screen print, uh, monotype, cyanotype, um, letterpress. You know, we, we can do really pretty much everything in this room. You just have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other questions or comments, or would you like to? I'm I'm noticing how you can tell the book arts people because a lot of those prints are meant for a more intimate experience. From sitting back here, mm -hmm. you want to go right up to it, whereas some of the more graphic ones, you can tell that they're more of an artist that is used to having people look at things from far away. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, because a book you always experience like to hear. Right. And it wouldn't make sense to put a book in a frame and see it from against a wall, but an artist that's used to having work in a gallery, they want somebody to look and go, oh. And be drawn to it. Yeah, yeah. be drawn straight up to black and white circles so dynamic that way. 
Yeah. And same with the raven next to it. That's so strong and powerful. Yeah, Here, this, this one it is, um, it's this one I just really adore. And it's done, this is what Julie Chen, right? Um, so you can really only see the text. It's white on white paper. And there's this kind of this image of a pole, you know, with the longitudinal, latitudinal lines. And then this just says right in the middle, elegy for polar ice. And on this side, you can see this image that appears like ice and it's breaking up. And from back there, it, it doesn't look like much, but from up here, you just feel that power. And then you think about what's happening on, you know, in the polar regions and it just gets you in your heart. You know, I think uh, so much of the stuff, especially, you know, looking at the environment, uh, issues of indigenous, you know, work in the Northwest, um, things about the West. There, a lot of it, if, if the artist is grabbing onto a concept that is outside themselves or about, you know, their world or about current events, you start to learn things, right, that you wouldn't know by reading the paper or talking to somebody or watching the news. Um, and so this one over here by um, Laura Russell is actually about the saguaro cacti. She lives in Arizona. This is about the Northwest, but she just moved down there. And so she, she um, the saguaro cactuses are uh, disappearing and they're thousands of years old, you know, because of climate change and same with the, which, you know, the sugar pines in California and the, um, the giant uh, sequoia. And so I wouldn't know this about the saguaro cactus. So it's really amazing. Maybe walking around and looking at the prints and being able to pick Susan's brain would be a good next step. Yeah, do you want to go and walk around a little bit? Yeah. When you finish deciding what you're going to do for your print, what makes you decide what materials you're going to use? Oh, that's a you have really good questions. Let's see. Um, it might be based off of uh, the idea from the print. It might be uh, because I'm already working with similar materials, and so my thought processes just shift into this other thing. Um, I try not to ping pong way too much. Um, this, the piece that I have, um, the bird fleeing the, the smoke, um, I was quite bothered by uh, that year in 2020, not only the Holiday Farm Fire, here, but also a mass die-off of songbirds that happened when a migration that went all the way from, you know, through Canada to through the western United States and then, you know, they're all heading to Mexico. Um, the birds uh, starved to death because of a number of different things and in part because of the trying to get through California and Oregon. Um, but mostly because of a really early winter storm, springtime winter storm, and they didn't have enough food. So I connected those two together and those two ideas um, together. And I also had gathered um, some burnt wood from the Holiday Farm Fire, and I crushed it up and mixed it with oil to make the ink that's black in that, which was difficult to print because it's not commercial ink. It's pretty gritty, um, but I think having a little, you know, bit of that is uh, important to the piece. Yeah. I think, I think we're at a good point where we could transition. Yeah. Think, before we do that, I'd like to thank Michaela and Sarah 
I, I'd like to thank Michaela here and Sarah, both our work study in the gallery this term, and we all worked together with Susan um, putting the exhibit up, uh, which was a lot. Um, and it's really great to, to be able to share these and, and see all of them, so thank you. Thank you. It was a good learning experience. It was also really interesting to learn all the terminology as we went through it, like you said. Um, so as someone who doesn't print a lot, it's cool to hear what you had to say about their techniques and then get to research them and like find out what exactly that is and what goes into it. Yeah, you guys did a great job of putting little informational blurbs on the tools in the case. Appreciate that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. This has been fantastic. So the show is up until? The show is up and we'll deinstall Valentine's Day. On Valentine's Day. So all yeah. you people out there in the digital land, yeah. uh, the gallery is open generally. But Generally, uh, business hours. Monday through Thursday from 9 to 12.30 and 1.30 to 4. Given the state of our times these days, I would say to call ahead and just make sure that it's open because um, we're kind of working on a bit of a skeleton crew these days. Um, but yeah, you're, you're welcome. We're on the LCC campus um, in Eugene. So if you're in the area, uh, come into the Roger Hall Gallery and take a look at print three portfolios. And if you guys have any questions, you can email me, Susan Loudermilk. And my Lane email is loudermilks at lanecc.edu. Easy to find and search it out. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yay.